How you doing? This is John and welcome to John's Long Box. Today we're taking a look at the Monster Manual. This is Advanced D&D &D by an illustration of Compendium of Monsters Aerial Servant to Zombie by Gary Gygax. TSR Games, Lake Geneva. I, I went to a Gary Con a couple of years ago. Uh, you know, Gary Con is the Dungeons Dragons convention in honor of Gary Gygax. And uh, I've learned one thing. Well, I learned two things. I learned, uh, one, that I love board games. That's that's when I started my board game uh, habit. I went there and I, I played board games. Why did I play board games? Because three-hour sessions of Dungeons & Dragons with pre-generated characters with complete strangers was excruciating. The people were nice. I, you know, the people were very good, but I don't know. I guess I, I, guess I like the story. I like the campaign. But uh, three, you know, here, here's your character. Let's play. Move on to the next table. I, I hated it. But... It was an experience. All right, so let's get that out of the way and let's crack open the monster manual. Okay, that's the inside cover. Let's check this out. I love that drawing. The land shark, the bullet, just just ripping everybody apart. Okay, this is the fourth edition, August 1979. Okay, the first edition came out in 77. So, okay, printed in the USA. There we go. There's all the uh, credit. Illustration by David... Sutherland and covered by David Sutherland and all the names. Okay, so Gary Gygax wrote like all these rules and everything like that. Here's the alphabetical table of content and you know, rules, stuff like that. Uh, and he, this was a big joke. I love the illustration of the aerial servant. It's so servant. It's so cool. And then people would open it up and be like, ha ha, you got me. Nothing, nothing like little kid humor. Look at that drawing of the aerial servant. The Ankhag, some of these, I don't know, carnivorous ape, the axe beak. And this always freaked me out. I don't know what it is, but getting attacked by giant ants I could probably handle, regular ants I can handle, but ants the size of chihuahuas freak me out. Oh my God. <laughs> the basilisk. I've always loved the basilisk. And according to mythology, the basilisk wasn't a big snake like like they have in uh, in uh, in uh, Harry Potter. It basilisk basically means little king, and it's supposed to be like a crowned lizard, like like a, like a gecko or something like that. Uh, giant beaver. I will refrain from the ob obvious joke. The beholder. The beholder. I love the, I love beholders. Uh, that's something about them. I thought a black pudding, blink dogs. I always thought this was such a cute picture. Um, brain mole, brownies, buffalo, bugbear. Look at that guy. Look at that guy. Looks like my next door neighbor. And here's a creature. I, I always love this creature, the, the bullet, the land shark. And according to legend, supposedly uh, Gary Gygax bought a bag of like rubber toys. And that was the inspiration for the, uh, the bullet, the owl bear. And I think the carrion crawler. Uh, and supposedly like you, you could get that same bag of toys on, on, on eBay for like a fortune. The cattle blaypos. This was a creature that I, I, when I was a little kid, I'm talking like second grade, you know, when I first started reading, there was this book of, illustrated book of monsters from, from my school library. And it just had like, 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 like Shel Silverstein type drawings of, of monsters. And one of them was the cattle blaypos. And one of the way they described it, it was it had a, a very fragile neck and like a human head, and its neck wasn't long, uh, strong enough to support its its head. So its 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 human head was always facing the dirt, which was good because if you looked at the eyes, you you'd die. And uh, that picture, man, it scared me as a kid. I've always loved that that centaur. This freaks me out. I don't know. Like I said, insects, large in like my friend always used to say, insects bigger than a dime freak him out. But I will say insects larger than my my hand freak me out. Oh, man, I I don't know if 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 there was a, a just imagine a centipede the size of your cat running around your basement. I'd I'd move. I'd set the house on fire and move. The chimera destroyed by Bellerophon in Greek mythology. I I love Greek mythology. The cockatrice that was supposed to be like uh if if uh, if a chicken nestled a serpent egg it, it would uh the, the cockatrice would, would be hatched the quattle 
crocodiles. And here we go, demons. The there's the demogorgon. For all of you people who watch Stranger Things, the creature that they used in the, de you know, the demogorgon was the little uh, figure that they used. They it had two heads and tentacles. That was correct. But the monster that they encountered was not. They called it the demogorgon, but it was really like a dimensional shambler. But this is the demogorgon, and uh, I remember the guy who, uh, it was my sister-in-law's cousin taught me how to play Dungeons and Dragons and he always threatened us with the Demogorgon he's like this is the most un most powerful most unbeatable creature in the book you know today and he'd always say today we fight the Demogorgon and we get we get scared but I don't know there's something, something about that and Demogorgon if I remember correctly it's it's from Greek mythology some Greek uh maybe not Greek mythology but like Greek uh philosophy it it, it was like a like a mispronunciation or a mis mistranslation of a of the demi urge, so uh, so it, it was like a, a demi urge is is the uh, the divine sparks that creates everything, and the demogorgon was like this, like false creator, is is the only way to describe it. So it was kind of like a, a like a satanic reference, and uh, it, of course it became something in Dungeons Dragons. The, uh, and Jubilex, the faceless lord. It's it's just like a big, contagious thing of of jellies and puddings and everything like that. Just disgusting. The manes, and the manes were like spirits of the dead in, in in Roman mythology, if I remember correctly. And the manes were like household spirits, and the die means were the. Uh, like the personal like spirits of, of a house of a family and that's where the word demons come from so you know they weren't necessarily even evil they were they, they were like household spirits and then the die mains were like like direct descendants of us something like that I, i'm sure i'm getting it wrong but that that's where we get the word demon and orcus was was a a, a roman uh like lord of death or something like that i i i don't know and is everybody's favorite the succubus? You know, uh, the 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 female demon that uh, that haunts your dreams, stuff like that. And I guess the male one was the incubus. And there's these type one, I, I, Vrak. So I guess Vrak was always like the name of a specific type one demon, right? Not not the type like Herzu, the type two demons, and then the Glabzeru. I can never pronounce his name. Nalfashni. The Marilith Type Five, Balo. I don't know, but my friend told me, a different friend, that this was just basically Balrog from the Lord of the Rings, just made into D and D rules. But I don't know. But that's kind of what we always, always thought of it as, like, like, you know, because look, it, it it's got the whip, it's got the lightning, but whatever. And Yinogul, Lord of the Ghouls. These, this is now like these are unique beings. There's not a whole bunch of these. These are like demon gods. And now we have the devils, Asmodeus, Asmodeus, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, Asmo is sky and Deus is is god. So this is sky god. This is basically like later on medieval medieval scholars basically transformed Zeus and Jupiter because Ju Jupiter's tr true name was 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 a you know Jupiter sky father and sky god so this is like a a judeo christian condemning of of, of of jupiter and zeus in, into a demonic form and balzebul balzebul you know the Baal was the name of like a phoenician gods you know the Baal, the, the golden calf that that, that uh, moses destroyed and so these there was a whole bunch of balls in, in Canaan and Phoenician and you know myths, so they they just became like demons, but they they really were like Mediterranean gods. The Barb Devil that is just cool. That I I always like that. The Bone Demon that is freaking cool. I lo I love. I'm sure somebody's got a tattoo of that. And this is Despater. You know this is another bastardization of of, of Jupiter. You know Disfather, father of 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 strife, father of disco. You know Potter is. You know where we get a, you know, P 
patriarchy and you know stuff like that so you know and this i think is, is just like discord and and, and 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 uh strife so father of strife the ironies the ironies were, were uh the the three ironies were uh like the fates the 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 gray sisters the weird sisters the norns you know so i i don't know how they guy got sometimes he was fast and loose with with, with mythology and they became devils but these were really like they weren't really the the ironies i think were like a like uh the humanities and the fates and the mora but like i think the ironies were like one of the aspects where they punished you know they had lots of names and garyon that's just cool looking horn demons how cool is that how cool is that ice demons and Lemurs, I think I think the mains were maybe Greek versions, and Lemurs, I think, were the Roman versions of the household spirits and stuff like that. And then the pit fiend. Some people argue that this was the, uh, you know, the Balrog transformed into into D and D rules. I'm not going to argue either way because I, I I don't know. And then we had dinosaurs, and this drove me nuts as a kid that there's no pictures of the dinosaurs. You know, there's a few pictures over here, but they, every dinosaur should have been drawn because. Dinosaurs are cool. Everybody loves dinosaurs. Boys love dinosaurs. Girls love dinosaurs. Old people love dinosaurs. Everybody loves dinosaurs. There should have been more pictures of dinosaurs. You know, there's some not, not very many dinosaurs. There. You know, but how cool was that? You th throw like a freaking armored knight riding a stegosaurus into battle. Triceratops, my favorite dinosaur. There's no picture of it. Tyrannosaurus Rex. And then the Displacer Beast. I not only do I love the Displacer Beast. I love that picture. And I do not have any tattoos. But if I was to get a tattoo, that's the tattoo I would get. I love that drawing. I love that creature. <coughs> Again, with the cough. I uh, I play a role-playing game. I haven't played in a while because my group kind of fell apart when I moved. But uh, this is one of the creatures that I imported in, into my superhero game. There was like a, 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 a supervillain. Kind of like Ozymandias had the genetically modified links. Well, th this guy made a genetically modified. I, and after a while, they were like, oh, it's a displacer beast. You know, because, of course, I didn't call it the displacer. The gin? Dogs. Everybody loves dogs. Dolph. Doppelganger. How cool is that? And then everybody's favorite, the dragons. This is just generic rules of the dragon. And alphabetical order, we got the black dragon. Spits acid. Then we got the blue dragon that spits lightning. And... If I remember correctly, I don't know what they do today, but back in these days, the color dragons were evil. The metallic dragons were good. So we got the brass dragon. See, chaotic good. Then we got the bronze dragon. The chromatic dragon, Tiamat. You know, I, I always... I, I, I kind of got obsessed with Tiamat as a, as a kid and I and read up on it and everything. Tiamat is basically like a... Uh, the name for chaos so like the greek in, in in greek mythology first there was chaos and from chaos came like you know there was chaos and order and cause well it was chaos and cosmos and i think that tiamat was basically the babylonian version of, of, of chaos so that would make bahamut the uh the, the uh embodiment of 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 cosmos which was order so that became a big deal in my role-playing games Bahamut and Tiamat is chaos and order. And this cop, this copper dragon, the gold dragon, like an oriental dragon, the green dragon, the red dragon, everybody's favorite, the dread dragon, the silver dragon, to something about, I don't know, I thought silver was just like a cooler color than, than gold, so like a silver dragon is just so cool looking. The white dragon breathes ice. The dragon, it's like a dragon lion mix, dragon turtle. And dryads. Dwarf. Dwarves. And then eagles. Look at that great drawing of an eagle. You know, it's just so cool. Ear seekers. Eels. Ifrit. I love Ifrit. I don't I don't know why, but I've always loved Ifrit. I, I was actually looking for my monster manual with the cool drawing of the Ifrit, and I, I couldn't find it, so I, I settled on the uh, monster manual. I, I was looking for the Dungeon Master's Guide, rather. Elemental, and I love how it has like two eyes in this whirling vortex. Earth elementals, fire elementals, water elementals, elephants, elves. And these are definitely, 
t definitely Tolkien elves. Def de definitely, 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 definitely Wapner. These were definitely Tolkien elves. Um, all the lore and everything, like, kind of fits uh, Tolkien. Then we have the Dro, and I don't know how to pronounce this. Some people correct me and say Drow, but the Dro, um, they are only legend. They purposely dwell deep beneath the surface in a strange subterranean realm. The Drow are said to be as dark as fairies are bright, and evil as the later are good. Tales picture them as weak fighters, but strong magic users. Um, there you go. There's Drow elves. Gary Gygax made them up, so... You you uh, you argue with the guy who created it. Uh, gray elves, the the half elf, wood elves, the Etten, the floating eye, the eye of the deep. You know, so many. I this is my favorite out of all of all the books. The the fiend folio is always like the silly monsters, gar gargoyles, I guess spore, gelatinous cube. Believe it or not, there's no picture of a gelatinous cube or ghasts. But there are ghouls and ghosts. I'm going a little quick because, you know, we don't need to go. And giants. I was kind of fascinated by giants. The cloud giants. You know, these are the giants. Like when you read like a Jack the Beanstalk, there's the castle on top of a cloud. These are the giants that are, that are supposed to be there. And then the fire giants. These are the fire giants from, you know, Muspelheim from, from uh, Norse mythology. You, you see these a lot in like the Thor movies, stuff like that. And Surtur was, was their lord. Then you have the Frost Giants, and Thrym was their lord. Uh, just how cool is that picture? Just uh, Giants from Jotun, you know, the frozen mountains. These these things just come out of the ground and uh, come down out of the mountains, just just wreck. And then the Hill Giants, you know, these are like the, you know, not as powerful, they're not as tall. Stone Giants. In, in, in Tolkien, the Stone Giants were the ones that were like, they were literally made out of conglomerations of stones, and they were... They were battling in, in the Hobbit and wrecking stuff. Storm Giants. From, they're also from... Uh, they were the most powerful giants from Norse mythology. Just so freaking cool. And gnolls. I, uh, I never liked gnolls until a friend of mine said they were basically hyena men. And uh, I don't know if it says it here, but uh, I, I kind of thought like this a cackling army of like hyena-type warriors just like devouring the dead like carrying I, I just thought that was like just a terrifying concept and i yeah i i've, I've used them many times since, since my friend made me re reimagine them and gnomes I, I, yeah, don't particularly care either way for gnomes you know and goblins i always thought like goblins i i always imagined them as like a like monster like humanoid monstrous like basically the equivalent of locusts just the you know 40 40 to 400 they just come running screaming and like all they do is devour and defile and ruin you know because they're not particularly powerful but uh hordes of them like a one locust big deal but a horde of them you know just i, I just kind of find that concept cool and then golems i told you i uh i kind of got obsessed with golems for a while i thought that was so cool like fresh flesh golems are basically like frankenstein monsters the iron golem this is definitely inspired from talos from the uh Jason and the Argonauts movie, the giant go golem, and then the st stone golems. How cool! How, just how cool! Gorgons. This always bothered me because Gorgon basically means bright eyes, and there was only three Gorgons. It was Medusa and her two sisters. They weren't horse-like, gas-breathing creatures. I don't know. I never used a Gorgon because because of that. You know, like I said, sometimes Gary Gygax was fast and loose with with with, with mythology and stuff. Gray ooze, green slime. Griffins, who doesn't love griffins? The groaning spirit or a banshee. Halflings, harpies, hellhounds, herd animals. Look, look at this description. 20 to 20 or more, armor class, 8 to 7, move, look at this variation. Hit dice, that means how many 8s on the dice you roll to give them the hit points. Number of attacks, variable, damage, variable, stampede, blah, blah, blah. No, the small, medium, or large, you know. <laughs> they, they, they didn't even have to write anything because this is like no information. I guess it's just a template to make up whatever you want. Hippocampus, that is freaking cool. And then the hippogriff, which was made popular by Buckbeak from Harry Potter. Hippopotamus. Uh, the hobgoblins. I, 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 you know, I always thought like a hobgoblin was just like a, like a bigger, tougher version of a of a goblin. It just, you know, just uh, I, don't, I don't know. I guess hob. I, the word hob must mean something. I gotta look up. Like I, I don't, I don't know like Middle English and stuff like that. I really should. That's like a black hole in, in, in my 
you know, fantasy knowledge, homunculus. Homunculus just is, is a, diminu a diminutive man that, like a, that a, like a wizard will create to a, to aid them, and they usually turn corrupt after a while. I, it never looked anything like this, but whatever. What do I know? The Hydra. The, we all know the story of the, of the Golden Fleece. That's that's an imps. Just I always thought that was cool. I always looked like he was eating a pickle. Intellect Devourer. That is just so cool, and it's definitely like a. You know, I incorporated them in like a, my superhero games as, as like aliens on another planet. Just they just look so alien. I always thought there were some types of creature. And I'll talk more when we get to mind flares. I always thought there was some of these creatures just work great as, as aliens. I can't even begin to pronounce that. Jackal wares, jackals, jaguars. The Kirin. Kobolds. Kobolds in mythology were just basically like little household spirits. I don't know where they. Got them into like like dog lizard men, so, so I ne I never used kobolds. Like if if there was a problem with the mythology, I never I never used them. So there we go. We got some cool draw. I I I, I love the the ant. So these like myrmidons. That was Achilles. Achilles had a group of of, of uh, warriors that, that he was the 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 boss, and they were the myrmidons. The lamea. That's from uh, basically a lamea is like a Roman vampire you know and it, it, they turned it into this but whatever lamasu i know nothing about so i, I can't comment on that and larva leech leprechaun lucrata i know nothing about this i should look up that's and the lich i love liches oh my god did i i used and abused liches i i used them for so many different things i i just thought they were so freaking cool just taking a drink of my delicious Tim Hortons coffee. Uh, I don't know. Like I, 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 I used them as villains in my superhero games, and I used them as villains in my uh, D and D games. And believe they are always the big bad the liches. I, I, I love them. And uh, well, and basically, I always thought that the uh, the Nazgul were nine liches. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that that's I always pictured lizards. Lizard. How cool is that drawing? Oh my God, is that cool or what? I I could never say the loca, locatha, locatha. I I don't know, but basically they're like deep ones, if you ask me. And the lurker above that is cool. Werehogs, werebores, werebears, were tigers, and then I love that werewolf, giant lynx, manticore. Manticore was supposed to be the most dangerous creature in all of Greek mythology. The head of a man, the, the lion-like body, the serpent tail, bat wings, just so freaking cool. And they're supposed to have like the, the most dangerous, poisonous venom of, of, of all. Like there was, you were going to die. And then Medusa. Everybody knows Medusa. So And then men. Bandits, you know. That is cool. It looks like faff. Not a lot of pictures of men. And then we got the merman. That's a great picture. And the mimic, I never liked mimics. Never, I never used them when I was a DM. And mind flares. Uh, some people will say I overuse mind flares. They are my favorite D&D &D creature. And I always thought they came from, from outer space. And then I saw like a, a module where basically confirming that they came from outer space. So I do a superhero game. It, I use the vi villain's vigilantes rule. And in my campaign, the mind flares. I I read somewhere that the earth that Earth. For like two billion years, Earth didn't have the moon, and it was covered in shallow seas because the the moon locks the Earth in, in rotation. So the Earth at the time just would like rotate all around, and because of that, there was no polar ice caps. So the Earth was 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 covered in seas. And I said that's where mind flayers evolved and grew. And then when the Earth, something hit the Earth, and the Earth exploded, and the moon came out and it was formed, and the, the habitat of the of the Earth was no longer good for mind flayers. But at this point, some of them have already. Flat, you know, you know, started exploring the universe, and those evolved into mind flayers. So their names are called elithids. So I said the protolith, the protolids were destroyed, but the evolved mind flayers are, are searching, and they they finally figured out that the Earth was their homeworld, and now they're coming back. To, so the first thing they got to do is destroy the moon so that they can come back and and. and you know, terraform the Earth into the conditions that they liked. So that's been an ongoing plot in my superhero game. 
You like that? Now somebody, one of you guys is going to steal it and turn it into a movie, and I'm going to die poor. And here's the Minotaur. Everybody loves the Minotaur. Theseus killed the Minotaur. Mold. Royal Battle League. And Mork. Morkoth. I know nothing about this. I'd never used them because I, 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 I don't know what they are. One of the things that Gary Gygax, as brilliant as he was, he didn't really give you... It was just rules. Rules, rules, rules. Very dry. Not, not too much personality. So I don't... I, don't really know like much about this creature other than it's as then it's like just a collection of rules and i don't mean this to be disrespectful and my hands are always filthy guys i i i, I work outside i work construction and uh the cracks in your hand just get filled up with this dirt and you could scrub them and scrub them and scrub them and they never get clean like you have to be out of work for like two weeks before my hands actually get clean but anyway so i apologize for my disgusting hands my wife's always like, get away from me with those dirty hands. You know? <laughs> so one of the things, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I always wonder if like Gary Gygax was like autistic or whatever, because like he was very, everything was organized. Everything was, you know, codified, ratified, cross your T's, dot your I's at the expense of, of like flavor, you know, like I'm more flavor and less rules orientated, you know, like I'll, I'll give up some rule stuff like that to, to guide the game into a more fun, enjoyable memorial experience. And I, and because I always thought Dungeons and Dragons was always like, like cold calculating and, and numbers. It was number crunching, number crunching, number. And that's why like that term munchkin came up. Like people who didn't care about the characters just wanted to get the best numbers to get the best character. Like they didn't care, like their character was suited, you know, they just want the cool sword, no matter what it looked like, no matter what, because because it was the best number. With some character, people just like, no, I I, I want a scimitar because my character's from you know from the east and whatever, as opposed to medieval, and I, and this armor would fit this about you know, and they're more they, they'll give up numbers for a better character. I'm more give up the numbers for a better character kind of kind of player. And I I always got the feeling that Gary Gygax was was the exact opposite of, of me. Still, I, I would have loved to have met him. I, I, you know, I met one of his grandchildren or maybe great grandchildren. I forget. And it was completely nice. You know, he he created this. And I know it was him and, and the other guy whose name escapes me. You know, the, like the Bill Wozniak of, of Dungeons Dragons. You know, Bill Gates got all the credit and the other guy. But whatever. There's, there was two guys who created Dungeons Dragons, and all I can remember is Gary Gygax. But uh, like Stan Lee, Gary Gygax. It was one of the people that was super influential in my life. I always say it was Stan Lee, you know, and Jack Kirby, Gary Gygax, and Dave Arneson, is that his name? And then, then there was other other people, you know, the biggest influence in my life. Andy Kaufman, Gary Gygax, Stan Lee, you know, three big, I, I would put Patti Smith, you know, maybe David Bowie, people who influenced my life. Owl Bear, everybody's favorite Owl Bear. How can you not like that thing? That is so freaking cool. That is just so freaking cool. Pegasus. And I'm going to start speeding up now. A, a Periton. I, never, I, I don't know anything about that mythologically. Pixies. A pseudo dragon. I always thought that was like such a cool cop. Uh, a, a cool concept. I, I can't speak. The purple worm. Quasits. I never used those because I, I don't know anything about it. Rashakas I always thought were really cool. I actually did research on Rashakas before I used them. I thought they were cool cool creatures. Turned one of them into a supervillain to fight superhero. Remoraz, how could you not like that? That That is so freaking cool. The rocks, I love this concept of these birds that are bigger than elephants. So, so freaking cool. Rot grubs, these are just mean. Throw rot grubs on, on your player characters and they will hate you. They are, This to me is a stupid monster and I refuse to use it. This was just like a monster that made no sense, and it was there just to f up the players. I I, I always thought that about Dungeons Dragons was like, like it, the original concept of Dungeons Dragons. It's just a dungeon with all these monsters. Like how did how did they live? How did a, a dragon just hung out in a big room and like how did it get out? How did it breathe? How did it eat? Where did it go to the bed? You know, it, the whole ecology of the dungeons just didn't make sense. And that was the part of Dungeons Dragons that I I, I hated the most. So, I remember there was like a big evolution of just like open the door, fight the monster, take the treasure, you know, the hack and slash campaigns. And once I started realizing I, I, I like the role play, I like the story, I like the, like a campaign of like evolving the characters and, the, you know, going from peasant to knighthood to, to becoming the baron and stuff like that. And an overall arc of all my characters. I love that stuff like this. I got rid of because this is just 
you know, to, to f with, f what you play. It destroys your armor. It destroys your magical weapons. Blah 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 blah. But how you know? So if I did have this creature, it, what it would be would there, there would be an insane wizard who is just making crazy experimental monsters to e e e you know either protect him or uh, or just like because because he was like total like influenced by madness and chaos and stuff like that. But uh, I, I would never just throw it. it in 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 a, in a dungeon, there would be no gold left. You know, if it just ate, there would be no magic weapons left. If if there's rust monsters, that is so cool. Salamanders, so freaking cool. Giant scorpion. I hate scorpions. I don't even want to look at that picture. Satyrs, the sea hag, the sea lion, shambling mounds. I I love these. They're basically swamp things. She does. I, I think they're like Babylonian mythology. Shriekers. That's a cool concept. And everybody loves skeletons. Again, I'm going quick now because I've I've been I've been pontificating. The Sphinx, so cool. The three types, you know, the Creo Sphinx, the the female Sphinx. The, I can't even pronounce that. Oh, this picture always used to freak me out. Look up, look up. There's a spider over there. Oh my God, you freaks! You're gonna get eaten by that spider. Oh my God, that that's just stressful. Sprites, Sturges. <laughs> I thought they were cool. This I never used it, but I always thought that was like a scary looking monster. Can you imagine seeing that in a jungle? Oh my god, that would scare the hell out of me. The sliffs. This guy's getting blood drained by these these things. This thing I never used. I don't know why, it just looks ridiculous. Titans, just gigantic. Oh, so cool. And I think these were like uh, prehistoric mammals. Treants. You know, those are the Ents from, from Tolkien. The Tritons. Troglodytes. Troglodytes basically means cave dwellers. Trolls. Umber hooks. I love umber hooks. I've used umber hooks in in my superhero world and then and and uh, D and D a lot. Vampires. Here's one thing. I don't know. I never, never use level draining. I, I find it to be a bad, a bad uh, broken concept. You know, I I never never have a. If you're a ninth level, don't worry about it. You're never gonna go to eighth level in, in, if you play with me. I I. I oppose that whole concept it's it is it, it's 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 counter the purpose of dungeons and dragons you know you want to level up that's the whole purpose of the game to me having a creature that could just just make take you down a level to oh man i will i i i, I did use it i did use it a few times but i, I just realized it, it is just the fun destroyer and the whole purpose of the game is to front. So vampires to me do other things. I, I actually rewrote. I have like a five page write ups on, on, on how vampires work. And I will never use le level draining. Water weirds. Weasels. How cool is that picture? I never used them until I found out that the word white is like a proto dramatic term for corpse. And then I'm like, okay, okay. And then when I read The Lord of the Rings for the first time, they fought the Barrow Whites. And I'm like, okay. So then, then they became one of my favorite creatures. A wraiths, a wyvern, a zorn. Th these things came from another planet. You know, you can't tell me that those are, those are aliens. And yetis, that's a great picture. And then zombies. And the rest of the book is just uh, appendices of how to distribute treasure and stuff like that. Like, like that. There you go. Like, it it tells you a treasure type, and then you go down here to get this. And I'm glad that they did that because it gave you an idea, so that you know. So that the players wouldn't get, you know, gypped by by f giving them lousy treasure. So it gave you kind of a, a, a guide of, of how to distribute magic stuff like that. So there you go. That's the that's the monster man. I haven't done a half hour video in a long time. I hope you enjoyed this. Sorry, I didn't do a video yesterday. One of my friends died suddenly. I'm sure you could understand why I, I didn't do a video. I went to the wake tonight. Uh, you know, I, I I don't want to talk about. It. It's very 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 sad. Very sudden. Um, Young, younger guy, you know, younger than me. So anybody younger than me is young. Is a young guy too. So there you go. But back to the monster manual. I, I played the red box Dungeons Dragons. That's how I, that's how I started playing. Then of course I quickly moved to Advanced Dungeons Dragons. Then I went to Advanced Dungeons Dragons Second Edition, and that's it. I, I bought a few books past that, but I never played past Second Edition of Dungeons and Dragons, and I kind of abandoned the Dungeons and Dragons game. And I, I took up Villains and Vigilantes. Matter of fact, there you go. I got to go dig out my Villains and Vigilantes stuff and I'll showcase my Villains and villain Vigilantes rule book. I've used that rule book and then I uh, modified it. You know, I, I, I wrote 
additional rules that are basically as as thick as as, as the, uh, the 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 villains and vigilantes rule book. But I'll talk about that when I do talk about villains and vigilantes. This this, but I I, I played so much Dungeons and Dragons, and when I went, and then I stopped playing. You know. In, in high school, we got too cool and stuff like that. Then I went to college, and we would, you know, have the beer parties and stuff like that. And I think, you know, for whatever reason, Thursday night was was the the party night at my college, and then Friday night was sitting around. You know, a lot of people would go home on the weekends. You know, a lot of people would just drive their cars and 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 go home. That college was really weird in that a lot of local people would live in the dorms. You know, you, you don't see that in a lot of colleges, but this particular college, you saw that. So Friday nights, like. You know, a bunch of people would go home and, you know, we're watching TV in college. And I, and I think it was my friend Paul said, anybody ever play Dungeons and Dragons? And he was the last person in the world that they expected to be into Dungeons and Dragons. I was like, yeah, I got I got like everything. He's like, yeah, you want to play? I was like, yeah. So I drove home, got my books because I, I only live like a, less than an hour away. But I, I never wanted to go home. Why, why, why go home? You go to college, go to wait. So I got my books, and that Saturday I started making up a campaign. Everybody made up characters, and we got teased. But next thing you know, Thursday night we had this keg parties and idiotic insanity. And then Friday to Sunday, Dungeons and & Dragons. And it got so intense that like, we, uh, we, we, we'd go to like a local toy store. We'd get that plastic armor and stuff like that. We were, and, of course, we were too big for it, so we would like fix it so fix it up and you know we had plastic swords and plastic armor and stuff like that and then after a while like my, my i was my ulterior motive was to switch them over to villains vigilantes because i like that system better and then they tried it out just just to just to appease me and they like the freedom of of the villains vigilantes and then i've since modified it to use that to play dungeons dragons with with different rules and i never went back and that was that was uh 90 I think was like the last time I actually played Dungeons and Dragons, but I I still play role playing games, not as much as I want to, but I still play. But I use a different system, and I will I'll break out that rule book if if you're interested. So just let me know if you're interested in this non comic book stuff. I do it every once in a while. I saw this book, I was like, yeah, I got, I got to break this out. So thank you, thanks. This was a long video. I appreciate it. Um, sorry about yesterday. I'm sure you can understand why. And uh, we'll be back to a regular video tomorrow. And I appreciate that you took time out of your busy day to uh, watch my videos. Thank you so much. Please like. Let me know if you like it when I do some of this role-playing. I call this comic book adjacent stuff. Okay? Thanks a lot. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.